All right, we are in chapter 13. This is 13.1, section 13.1, and it's the U Try It. Um, the textbook has talked a little bit about the universal quantifier rules right there. So there's universal elimination, general conditional proof, and universal introduction. And so this is asking us to open the file universal one. I've already done that. And it says this file contains the argument proven above. It just went through how to do it. And so this is going to be very similar to what they have shown us above there. But uh, we'll walk through how to do it. So it says start a new subproof immediately after premises. Let's do that. We go down there and we go proof. And we do new subproof. There's our new, new subproof. And there's going to be something new. It says before typing anything in, notice that there's a blue downward pointing triangle to the left of the blinking cursor. Uh, that's really gray. I don't know if it used to be blue or what, but regardless, uh, yeah, use your mouse to click down on this triangle. A menu will pop up allowing you to choose the constant you want boxed in this subproof. So we're going to choose D right there. That's going to be our constant. All right, and it says after you have D in the constant box, enter the sentence D is P. All right, so we're going to do that. So here we go. Now it's in the assumption right there. It says then add a step and continue the subproof. So this is what we'll do. We're going to add another step. Now what can we do here? There's P, D, there's P up there. So what we want to do is just instantiate this first premise right here. And that is going to give us this. Yep. P, D, conditional, Q, D, right? So what, what rule did we use? We're just eliminating that universal quantifier right there. So elimination, universal, let's cite it and see if we're right. And there we go, we are. All right, so now what do we have? We have if PD, then QD, look up here, we have PD, so we get what? We get QD, All right? Easy enough. Now we cite both of these, that, and our assumption right there, and we are eliminating the conditional. Let's see if we're right, QD. Okay, so there's QD. And we're just gonna do the same thing that we did for PD, but with QD and this premise up here. All right, so let's add another step. And we're going to do the same universal quantifier elimination rule. We're going to say Q, remember our constant is D, that's what we chose. If QD, then RD, RD, and let's go ahead and cite, and then we'll do the rule, right? And it's, again, universal quantifier elimination, we've cited. That checks out, good. So we have QD, and if QD, then RD, then what do we get, right? It's just basically the same format that we did with this one and that one. Okay, so we get R, or D is R. And we get that from that, and that, right there. And we used, again, conditional elimination. We're gonna cite. And now what we have in our proof is if D is P, then D is R. And look down here, here's our goal. So we wanna make that universal for everything in the domain. So we've done that and we just need to generalize on it now or universalize on it now. So we have to end the subproof, takes it out here and we are just going to copy the goal right there Put it in this last line. Last line is the goal. And what did we use? Universal quantifier introduction. We got it from this subproof. Let's check that step. And our goal should check out. And everything checks out. It says, lastly, you should now be able to complete the proof on your own. That's what we did. When you're done, save it as proof universal one. So that's how you do that format.